Good morning and welcome everyone to Spotify's 2022 Investor Day. When you ask our listeners what they most admire about Spotify, more than 81% cite our personalization. And this is what we call discoverability. Spotify listeners view this as the reason not only to sign up for the service, but also the reason to stay. And they repeatedly tell us that we're the service that just gets them. And over time, our ability to find the right content for the right listener has improved significantly. So as a reminder, when Spotify debuted publicly, we were available in 65 markets around the world. And thanks in large part to our unique approach, in just four years, we've almost tripled that number to 183 markets and territories. We saw such a significant opportunity to expand our platform and our audience, so we decided to go aggressively after podcasting. And this meant making a significant investment, which clearly has brought more listeners to Spotify and deepened the engagement, but it also impacted our overall gross margin. And while the podcast vertical is still largely in investment mode and not yet profitable, we believe it has a 40 to 50% gross margin potential. So looking back, when we jumped into podcasting, there were really huge obstacles to overcome. We were a distant third behind the largest players in the industry, and everyone said we wouldn't be successful incorporating podcasts into what's traditionally been a music app. But where others saw challenges, we saw an opportunity to turn a nascent business into one of the most attractive verticals in the media landscape. And we applied the same winning formula as we did to music. We were able to build on the large and highly engaged global user base we established in music, giving creators scale from day one. And as a result, we dramatically expand the entire podcast industry. We're now the number one platform that podcast listeners use the most in numerous markets around the world, including here in the US. In just three years, we've not only become a leading platform for creators and listeners, but we've expanded the very format of podcasting itself. And what's even more, all of these investments have resulted in user growth, retention, and increased engagement with overall consumption hours reaching all-time highs, quarter after quarter. And despite all of this, we still think that there's incredible potential in this space. To sum this point up, what our successes in music and podcasting has clearly demonstrated is that we've built a powerful machine and solid infrastructure that enables us to go after new verticals. And we're not waiting around. But importantly, we aren't planning to stop there. We see the opportunity to continue to imagine and explore new verticals across our platform, within audio, but also beyond. And for each vertical, we will develop a unique set of software, services, and products and business models that's going to be tailored for that specific ecosystem. But again, all of these will live in one consumer experience. We will firmly cement Spotify as the home for some of the greatest artists and creators and educators in the world. And that gets us to that coveted position of being the world's creator platform, a place where artists and writers and labels and publishers, studios and creators can come to manage their businesses. And with these creators comes more listeners. And this then allows us the chance to also become the preferred content platform for users the place that they choose to listen, to learn, be inspired, educated, and informed, all while establishing deeper connections with the artists and the creators that they love. Lastly, with the world's top talent and hundreds of millions of engaged listeners, this gives Spotify the ability to attract the best brands and product partners. And we will keep on evolving, and we will keep on adding more verticals over time and expanding our business models to allow for more types of content and let artists and creators monetize them. This is the Spotify machine. We've moved from uh, being a music discovery and playback service to a fully-fledged platform where 
artists and creators can create, engage, and earn. A platform fueled by subscription, advertising, and creator service models applied to music, podcasts, audiobooks, and more. As you just heard, our business model is indeed quite complex. But fortunately, user research shows us that the Spotify listener experience is actually quite the opposite. It's simple. So to listeners, there is nothing complex about it. And that's why my team exists, to hide that complexity and give users a single intuitive experience that brings them all the world's audio in a relevant and personalized way. While our strategy on the front end is a single seamless consumer experience, on the back end, we're taking the opposite approach, recognizing that each format, music, podcasting, and audiobooks, has different creator needs, audience expectations, and business models. And this is why, on the back end, we've chosen to build distinct and separate software stacks and teams, deeply integrated into these different industries and optimized for each creator group and business. But before I hand it over, I hope you'll take away a few key ideas on our overall product approach. First, our strategy to adopt a single consumer experience enables us to accelerate our entry into new vertical and formats. This allows us and creators to capitalize on a compounding user base rather than several separate ones. Second, behind the scenes, our strategy is to build dedicated backends that super serve separate industries. It's important to remember that first and foremost, Spotify is a music company. All of our music team strategies ladder up to two primary goals, making a unique and superior music experience for fans and creating a more open and valuable ecosystem for artists. And these two goals really complement one another, which is clear to see when you look at the playlisting ecosystem we've spent the last decade defining and perfecting. Whatever your mood, your style, whatever the occasion, Spotify has something for you. There's far more shelf space on Spotify today than there's ever been in any record store or any radio station, meaning that revenue opportunities now reach far beyond the biggest stars. Consider this, over the past two years, 150,000 artists have been added to a Spotify playlist for the first time. And that can be a career-making moment. In 2021, for the first time ever, more than 50,000 artists generated more than $10,000 from Spotify alone, which likely means over $40,000 across all sources of recorded royalties. And artists from an increasingly wide variety of cultures are bringing new people to Spotify to listen, to share, and to connect. We are by far the most global platform, the most tapped into local scenes, and the most capable of developing opportunities for artists at scale. No other streaming service is better positioned to identify, amplify, and help shape culture than Spotify. In 2014, the way that music traveled on Spotify was mostly a transatlantic affair. At that time, Spotify was available in just over 50 countries. And this map shows how streaming traffic was primarily focused between our US and our European markets. In the years since, we've expanded into more than 100 additional markets. We've made dramatic improvements in our playlisting and promotional capabilities, and by honing our ability to recommend the listener's next favorite song regardless of language, we have helped to spread music from markets like Puerto Rico, South Korea, and Colombia all around the world. And the result? Here's that same map for 2021. This is the difference between 60 million users in 50 markets and 422 million listeners across 183 markets. Now imagine this map in 2030. We will see a kaleidoscope of activity, tens of millions of artists, a billion listeners, leveraging the power of Spotify to tap into music culture and connect to a borderless global audience. And that's what sets us apart from our competition. 
We are the preferred destination for artists because we help to take an active role in achieving their dreams, partnering with them to think outside the box, and working together to help them succeed. Our local teams on the ground see early indications of a trend, and our worldwide strength allows us to showcase these on a global scale. By unlocking the ability of any artist from anywhere in the world to connect with listeners everywhere, we are tapping into a potential market of billions of people. We're in the midst of an explosion of creativity where tens of thousands of songs are uploaded each day. And that rate of daily uploads has doubled in the last two years. In this rapidly growing landscape, artists need an evolving toolkit that works for the millions who will make up tomorrow's music industry. One that mirrors their creativity and ambition by offering speed and scale. For the music vertical, our goal is to deliver another strong year of growth. As our promotion initiatives scale, and we lean into these new revenue lines. As we've built tools to help artists engage, promote, and monetize, we've gone from offering distribution and royalties to providing much more value that can propel an artist's career both on Spotify and off. And as we've provided more value, it's generated value for Spotify too, as these marketplace businesses have been the primary factor in growing our music gross margins. And given the strong growth rates, this revenue will continue to be the primary driving force to help us further improve those margins. This means we'll continue to grow what we offer to artists and fans so that Spotify expands to be not just a, a licensed music service, but a platform for artist expression. Not just playlists you hope to get on, but the most important and reliable marketing platform to develop an audience and not just streaming income, but the place where artists monetize fans through multiple revenue streams. In 2019, when Spotify decided to move beyond music and become an audio platform, Anchor joined the band and drove massive growth for the podcast business and industry around the world. Through our two-sided strategy of having the best content and the best creation tools in the world, Spotify became the only company to have a critical mass of both podcast creators and listeners on the same platform. Now, think about how far we've come. In just under four years, we've gone from having virtually no podcasts on platform to being a global leader in the market. To put this in perspective, when Anchor joined Spotify in 2019, there were fewer than 500,000 podcasts on the platform. Today, there are over 4 million, and Anchor powers more than 75% of them. Those of you who followed us over the years know that a huge part of our mission at Spotify is enabling creators to live off their art. One of the ways we get there is by making podcasting more profitable for more creators. And as Daniel shared, we want to give creators the most control over how they grow and manage their individual businesses. So we've developed a few different offerings to help creators earn more. We invested in creators at every level and across all genres. And to date, we've committed more than a billion dollars to podcasting. This has allowed us to dramatically improve the consumer experience and grow the total audience through differentiated content. We also know that bringing podcasts and music together are especially powerful when it comes to audiences. Since 2018, We've gone from less than 7% of listeners on Spotify spending time with podcasts to 30% of users listening monthly. And users who listen to both podcasts and music listen twice as much as users who only listen to music. In the US, when we bundle music and podcast advertising, the average size of the spend on a campaign is four times that of a music-only campaign. So we're driving bigger spends from advertisers and growing our revenue significantly. By introducing streaming technology to podcasting, Spotify has helped create audio experiences that simply were not possible before. And now it's time to take that same approach to a new frontier, audiobooks. Annually, books are a $140 billion industry. 
And it's our belief that audiobooks can be a much larger part of that. And audiobooks are a massive opportunity for Spotify, because while they represent just a 6 to 7% share of that larger industry, the category is growing by 20% year over year. We believe this presents a really unique opportunity to introduce music and podcast listeners around the world to audiobooks and drastically expand that market. There is this common belief that complexity is bad. And that is because it tends to make the world unpredictable for us humans. But while that complexity may be hard for a human to handle, the rise of machine learning has given us new tools that have no problem handling this complexity. Our machine learning models can now tell us which combination of user, content, and monetization gives the most consumer value and the most creator value at a certain time. LTV is a power, powerful instrument that, number one, allows us to forecast the profitability of experiments and other initiatives and understand their potential impact on our bottom line. Number two, it promotes a thoughtful approach to investment in innovation and content. And number three, it predicts which content and experiences yield longer-term retention, engagement, and happiness, all of which are essential for Spotify to reach our goal of 50 million creators and 1 billion listeners globally, while also ensuring the business grows. Right now, we're on track to more than double our reach to over 1 billion users. And with our vertical platform strategy, our, over time, our ambition is to build the business toward an annual ARPU of 100 euros. This means, on average, looking at both free and paid, we can significantly increase the total revenue across our entire user base. Our subscriber growth has also been phenomenal. We have leading market share in paid users, and we are double the size of the nearest competitor in almost all of these markets. OK, zooming out again. We can see that the way we're driving our machine is working. We've come a long way in the established markets. Engagement is phenomenal, and we have more than a third of music industry market share. And this is because of the phenomenal strength of our subscriptions business and our fast-growing ads business. Looking ahead, the emerging markets are on a path to follow the established markets. User growth is, is already strong with a time that is almost five times as big as the established markets. We will continue to innovate across our propositions, tailoring our playbook to the needs of the regions to maximize our user and revenue growth opportunities. So to sum it up, we are on a path to hitting over 1 billion users globally by 2030. Our playbook is working around the world. As Daniel has previously said, gone are the days of ads accounting for less than 10% of Spotify's total revenue. Advertising is now poised to become a key growth driver. Over the long term, we expect ad revenue to be significantly more than 10 billion euros annually. And as Alex just explained, we're seeing very strong user growth across the world. And Spotify's ad machine stands ready to unlock huge value for creators, publishers, and advertisers. In some of our largest markets, including the UK, Germany, and Japan, we've just scratched the surface. But we don't stop there. As you may recall from earlier, the last step of our playbook is to bundle new verticals into our value proposition. We clearly see the chance to add more reasons for people to stick around and spend more time with Spotify. Our current business provides a strong foundation to enter new categories. And we're well on our way to making those categories new verticals. Just like the challenge of putting out a hit second album, People doubted if we could add podcasts alongside music. But now we know the answer. About a third of our listeners listen to podcasts, and we are the global market leader. Looking at where this is going, we will soon have hundreds of millions of podcast listeners on Spotify. This speaks to the power of our scale and, and the unified experience. We see podcasts becoming a $20 billion global opportunity by 2030. In the next 10 years, there are additional markets and verticals that we believe are natural fits for our platform and audience. There's audiobooks, there's news, sports, and education. 
Those are vast markets that we can imagine Spotify playing in. There are a couple of common threads to these examples. They are big consumer markets, sometimes much bigger than music, and there's a secular trend in these markets being massively evolved by the internet and software. We've long maintained that our success is not solely tied to renegotiating new headline rates. It's about our ability to innovate right along with our partners to grow a business that benefits both artists and Spotify, and that's what we've done with Marketplace. In 2018, our Marketplace contribution to gross profit was only 20 million. In 2021, it grew to more than 160 million, eight times the size in just four years. We expect that number to increase another 30% or more in 2022. We see tremendous upside in Marketplace and anticipate that its financial contribution will continue to grow at a healthy double-digit rate in the years ahead. And additionally, we see significant growth ahead for our advertising business, thanks to a combination of our investments in new product offerings, further penetration on and off Spotify, and growth in both developed and developing markets. All of these factors give us confidence that our advertising business has strong upside. And podcasting has two benefits. First, it will see a significant reversal from a margin detractor to a margin enhancer. And second, as it grows to become a larger percentage of our business, the mix shift will further benefit our consolidated gross margin. Over the next three to five years, we believe podcast margins should top 30%, and our long-term view is that this business could reach 40 to 50%. And as Alex dis discussed, we plan to launch three new verticals over the next 10 years, with audiobooks being first on the agenda. And as a consequence, we're building a model that no other platform has dared to attempt. And this strategy to ensure our success isn't really just based on one thing, but literally hundreds, if not thousands of things. And we think by embracing complexity and using machine learning and technology that we're making a new type of company possible, a bigger and better company. And the opportunity out there is massive. And I continue to believe it's ours to win. And we will do so with this machine that we're building. So from everything I see, I believe that over the next decade, we will be a company that can generate over $100 billion in revenue annually, and that we can achieve a 40% gross margin and a 20% operating margin. So with every innovation and enhancement, we will turn more listeners into super fans, giving our voices to more types of creators and offering our users multiple ways to interact and engage with the talent that they love. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today.